Hello, hi guys. Hi guys, if anyone can see and can hear me loud and clear, um, type a once in the chat um, below. Let me know guys if you can see and you can hear me because sometimes we really don't know if these things are working, all right? So type a one guys, if you can see and hear me loud and clear, type a one in the chat below. Let me know. Okay, good. I think I can see some of you coming on board again. Hi, we have Thomas Marco. Hi, Tony, uh, Hancock, Tom, Thomas, Ellis. Hi. Okay, good, good. Um, I think some of you are typing your stock. Uh, Jane, you're asking about Lee Otto. Hi, Alice, uh, Bing Hock. Good evening, Benny. Hi, Han Hock. Hello. Okay, good. So it seems like all of you can see and hear me. We have like more than uh, I would say 100 of you coming on board again. And guys, welcome to this um, Facebook Live show called Ask Me Any Stocks, right? Pretty much, um, you're able to ask me any stocks in the US market. In the US market, I mean, we have covered just a few weeks back. I'll uh, we talk about the Singapore market. So in today's live show, we will be talking about the US, right? The United States market. That's where you are able to ask me any stocks. And of course, don't, don't ask the stocks now because I think some of you are putting the stocks in the comments. And that's, that's where if you ask it in the chat below, I think you'll be lost, right? So I'll later I'll show you guys where to ask the stocks. But welcome to this live show called Ask Me Any Stocks, right? And yeah, pretty much where we'll be uh, covering the stocks, the US stocks that you guys are asking for, all right? So yes, welcome. Welcome to this live show. And, you know, there are a couple of things we'll cover by the end of today's session, right? But before I go into that, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for being here today, all right? So I'll do everything in my power to make sure I cover as many of those US stocks that you guys are asking about. So do stick around all the way to the end as well, all right? So just a quick disclaimer, all right? Um, pretty much whatever the chat today will be um, just for education purpose only so please do your own due diligence as well right the standard disclaimer that to share all right and welcome boys see a few names hi norman hi irene uh good to see you here tony hi daniel ray chin chow good to see you here okay so here's what you need to do okay in order to ask your stock so by the way guys for those of you who have just joined us my name is joey Choi, top here in my zero trader in philip securities and you know welcome to this facebook live show called ask me any stocks whereby you will be able to ask be your US. So we, we, we have covered like the Singapore market a few weeks back. So I thought a lot of people have been asking me about the US market as well. All right. And of course, we have seen weakness in, in the US market, in the Singapore market as well over the past week. We'll come to that in a bit. And that's, that's where we'll maybe even look at the market, right? So here's what you need to do, all right? In order to ask your stocks, can we open a new tab? All right. Open a new tab. Go to slido.com. Pretty much an app. That's where we will do like a live poll. Uh, in terms of the stocks that you guys are asking about. All right. Hi, EA. Good to see you here. Okay, good. Hi. Okay, yeah. So go to Slido.com, right? Go to Slido.com and let me just grab the link for you guys. You can just uh, click on the link as well. Okay, and uh, let me just share it right here. That is the link I just placed in the chat as well. Okay, and uh, go to Slido.com and you can also to part participate in this live poll. You can go and Slido.com and type the code AMAS03, right? AMAS03, pretty much this is what you need to go to do. All right, go to slido.com. AMAS03 is where you can uh, type in the code, all right? And that's where you can ask your uh, ask the stocks that you want, right? So there will be a live poll coming up right now. I think you, you can see it on your screen. For those of you who have done, you can just type a dance below. Let me know once this is done, guys, so that I know that you guys are following still. So go ahead to um, Stilo.com code AMAS03. Let me know once this is done. Okay, so I think there is like a, a little poll that has just gone on. All right, if you guys have already settled this Stilo.com code AMAS03, I think you can kind of like participate in this uh, in this poll, all right, and go ahead to answer this poll. I think we are like seeing some, uh, you know, questions coming in. All right, let me just go ahead to show you what uh, what is this about. Okay, welcome. Let's let's go on to talk about it, right? So this is like a poll, all right? This is like an active live poll that is coming right now. All right, so go to slido.com, code AMAS03, and that's where you can actually participate in this live poll, right? And of course, later you guys will be able to ask um, your US stocks as well, so not to worry, okay? So I think this is a live poll. You can see that it's kind of like changing. It's kind of changing. So open a new tab, or you can do it on your computer as well. If you're using a phone, all right? And pretty much what is your view on the stock market? currently let me know what's your view on the stock market currently i think we have like a few of you uh saying it's like bearish mostly you're saying that it's like bearish short term but in the longer term it's still a little bit more bullish you can see this like 47 percent is kind of like changing 10 percent of you are bullish 
uh, please help to analyze 13 of 10 as well. So, okay, I would say that the first one would be like very short term. All right, so this is live poll. Let me know, guys, once this is done, before we continue, right? Type yes, type yes in the chat below. Like type yes in the chat below um, once this is done and all of you have kind of like logged in to speedo.com and you are able to participate in this poll. Type yes in the chat below. Let me know. Okay, good. Irene, yes, welcome. Irene, um, to Young Benny, yes, one. David, yes, as well. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so it seems like all of you are uh, kind of like locked into this, all right? Um, Stilo.com, that's where we have like our live poll and you can participate. Yes, 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 Han Hock, Alice, Patrick, come. Hi, Wong Tak, Angus, uh, Itong, Estel. Okay, good, good, good. Beyond Mid, I think some of you are asking about um, certain stocks here. Is, is it going to be Beyond Impossible? <laughs> okay, good, good. Okay, so yes, guys, welcome to this live show called Ask Me Any Stocks. And in today's um, you know, live Facebook live session, we're talking about the US market. So I kind of like did the Singapore market. So a lot of you have been asking about US. So I thought, why not just do one entirely on the US market? And that's where I'll be answering about, about five to eight or maybe 10 stocks. All right, so do stick around all the way to the end. Uh, maybe I'll share with you some of the stocks I'm looking at as well right at the end and you can potentially put them in your watch list as well so we have seen weakness uh in the market right so let me just go ahead to put this one side first uh before we talk so how many of you want me to like do uh do a quick um analysis of the the us market let me know guys type type five type five guys type five in the chat if you want me to do a quick analysis of the entire us market or some of the factors that are affecting the market right now. Type five in the chats below, right? Type five in the chat below if you want me to do that. Okay, wow. So it seems like quite a lot of you are asking five, 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 uh, Hancock five, uh, Tony five, Esther. So I think a lot of you are asking me to do a quick analysis of the market. So yeah, I think probably I'll just do a quick analysis of the market before we look at some of the stocks. So help me to hit the like and share button, guys. I think there should be a like or a heart shaped button somewhere at the bottom. Help me to hit the like and share button so that we're able to reach out to more people. More people can learn about the market in terms of how, uh, what are some of the levels that you guys need to take on as well. So hit the like and share button, the heart shape as well, right now so we are able to reach out to more people. Thank you so much for doing that, all right? Okay, so let's move on. Let's take a look at uh, the, the market, right? Before we look at some of the stocks. So yeah, I see a lot of you hitting the like button, right? So this is what I see. I'm not too sure whether you guys are seeing this on your screen, but. We have a little um, heart shape coming out. So hit the like and share button. I would really appreciate. Thank you so much for doing that before we move on. Okay, good, good. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's move on, right? So let, let's take a look at the, maybe the Dow Jones, right? So let's take a look at the Dow Jones um, right now. Okay, I think all of you are asking about the Dow Jones as well. So we do look at Dow Jones, maybe at the NASDAQ as well to see how we are, what are some of the factors affecting the market, right? So this is the Dow Jones right here, all right? Um, just last night, it closed about 34,000 level, all right? And of course, we have seen weakness coming in in the markets. I think all of you would know the reason why, all right? It's about a week already. And of course, we have this emergence of this new uh, Omicron variant that just came out just slightly about a week back, all right? And when it was announced, all right, unfortunately, we broke this 35,000 level. So I think the markets, you know, in worldwide, even the Singapore market has taken what we call a, a, a sell first and us later kind of approach, right? Something like what we saw in, in April, May, when we had the Delta variant, all right? Right now, we're seeing this like the same thing, right? So people come like this sold out first because there's a lot of uncertainty coming in for this, uh, you know, Omicron variant. And the thing is like, um, it's still quite new. And people are saying that it's like more transmissible, which is like, uh, happening. I mean, all the scientists around the world and governments are kind of like scrambling to find out uh, more data on this Omicron variant. So I would say that that is the main reason. And, and you know, I would say, you know, in, in the US, there's like one case. In, in South Korea, there's like five cases. And in Hong Kong, there's one. In Singapore, there's, there's still no cases yet. Uh, but pretty much the entire market selling off is due to the Omicron variant, whereby there's a lot of uncertainty. And I would say that the, the main reason would be kind of like whether uh, the current vaccines, right? Whether is it effective against this Omicron variant, all right? So I think there's kind of tests on it that is like more transmissible, but is it like more deadly? Is it more de deadly? I mean, do people get more sick and all that? I think that's, that's some of the, the key factors that are affecting the market, all right? And, and you know, people just kind of like sold off. So hopefully, all right, more data will come out. I think the Singapore gov government has came out over the past few weeks and said that, you know, we need more data, all right, more, need more data over the next few weeks as more tests are done to kind of like gauge whether is it like more deadly or more severe if you're infected, if you're vaccinated, if like the 
I mean, in terms of the efficacy of the current vaccine, does it work well, right? If not, then yeah, it might not be so good. But if it's like, you know, just more transmissible, but not that daily, then it could be a good thing as well. Because, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it could be like the dominant variant that is more transmissible, but less daily. And in fact, I think this came out in the news as well this morning that many of these, um, I think people who are kind of like infected with this uh, Omicron variant, they are in terms of like the systems, symptoms, right? In terms of the symptoms, it's like mild or almost no symptoms, right? So not that serious. So of course, we need more data, but I think that's the main reason why the market is so off. And of course, for the technology sector as well, uh, you know, there are ongoing concerns about inflationary pressures. And, you know, that, you know, Jerome Powell, the chairman, Fed, the Federal Reserve chairman kind of came out and said that, you know, they might come kind of like hike rates a bit earlier. And that is the reason why we saw the tech stocks, um, you know, just, just, you know, oh, Singapore found two. Thank you. Okay, I saw that. I think some of you... Uh, Marco, you mentioned that Singapore found two, two imported cases, not in community right now. I can see David. Thank you so much for this news. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. So, it comes like, you know, it's more or less uh, expected. I mean, because eventually it will come like spread around the world, all right? Because, you know, in, in most other countries, not just South Africa, uh, we already have, um, you know, cases of, of Omicron already, all right? But yes, I mean, in terms of the technology sector as well in the US, we did see a bit of weakness because of inflationary concerns and uh, Jerome Powell kind of like coming out to say that. There might be like a, a, a earlier than expected rate hikes. And when that happens, right, the market is not that bearish. I mean, sorry, it's not that bullish because uh, many of these tech firms that are looking at like you know future earnings and all that with rate hikes, it may kind of like discount uh, this future earnings. So it kind of like not it's not so good. And that's where many of those tech stocks sold off as well, uh, together with like the Omicron variant news, right? So this is pretty much the Dow Jones right here trading at about 34,000 levels. You can see that we were pretty much around here, 36, 36,500, you know, consolidating for like a month to three weeks here. All right, let me just go ahead to hide this right here. So, uh, okay, let me just push this one side. So go ahead to like and share, guys. Go ahead to like and share. It will definitely help out the channel. Thank you so much. But let's talk about indulgence right now. So I would say that we have broken this 35,000 support level. You can see this was a pretty much the resistance somewhere in like September, October, we broke 35, went up to 36,500. And unfortunately, the news came and we are pretty much back below 35,000 levels. So what would be like the new support level for the Dow Jones? For those of you who are asking to help analyze, I would say that the support level would be about that 33,500. So just give it a bit of leeway. You can see we're pretty much back to where we were um, since April, April, May. All right, this was where we had the Delta variant coming in April, maybe so off, right, right here from like 35 to about 32,500, rebounded. And then we have the tech sector selling away. So you can see, so a couple of, a couple of like, you know, weakness over the past like six months. And this is where we are heading to right now. I would say that support wise kind of rebounded from here in July, in, in September, in October. And this is the range, I would say about 33. 1600 to give it a bit of leeway 33,600 to 33,200 right here this is the range that whereby you know some potential bargain hunting can come back again right so yeah you can see that we're kind of like nearing uh this support level that has been holding over the past like six to seven months so that is where i would say that you know we can potentially see some bargain hunting coming back again for the blue chips, especially if, you know, um, the Omicron variant comes out and, and turns, turns out to be not that deadly and you see some good positive developments uh, coming on this, right? So that's the Dow Jones. I think anything um, right here, 33,200 to 33,600, that is where we have rebounded many times and it, it could become like a good level whereby the market might start to see some good bargain hunting again, right? So this is the Dow Jones, right? This Dow Jones, right? How many of you want me to cover like the um the Nasdaq as well? Or should we just dive straight into the US stocks that you guys are asking about? Let me know, guys. Nasdaq, type Nasdaq if you want me to cover the Nasdaq as well, or should we just go direct into the US stocks? Um, type the US stocks as well. Let me know. Lynette, you're saying yes, hi. Tesla, um, direct to US stock. I think I'll be asking about um, the US stocks. Okay, I think what, let's just dive straight into the US stocks right now. I don't waste any more time, all right? So uh, for those of you that just joined us, welcome to this live show called Ask Me Any Stock, whereby you, all right, not me, but you will be able to ask me any US stock. So here is where you will be able to ask me. Go to Stilo.com. I think some of you are there already. Go to Stilo.com. Your code will be AMAS. Zero three, all right, right here, AMAS zero three. All right, let me just go ahead to, to show you. This is the code sneedle.com, code AMAS zero three. That's where you can ask about the US stocks, right? So I've kind of placed a poll, I've kind of like placed a poll in sneedle.com. I think some of you who are at Sneedle right now, 
you will be able uh, to see the pole, right? The live pole, pretty much what are three, right? Three, all right? The US stocks that you want to be covered today, right? What are three US stocks that you want to be covered today? And guys, enter the name of the stock, right? Don't, don't enter the code because sometimes the code might just be a bit, a lot of people don't know what the code is, right? So enter the name of the stock, one counter, one line, don't enter like all in one line because it will not be able to tabulate, right? So enter three counters, maximum three, all right, guys, we can track. So maximum three, okay? one counter one line and just hit submit button and that's where we can see right we can see what are some of the top three stocks that each of you are asking about and that's where we can cover them as well let me know guys once done type done in the chat once this is done go to stido.com okay i think you're asking about tesla being hot yeah so ask in the ask in the stido.com right so i think we have a few of you asking already let's, let's take a look right Okay, guys, so this is live, right? This is live. Okay, so we have a few of you asking already, and these are pretty much the US stocks that you guys are asking. I'm not too sure whether you guys can see this on your phone, on your app. Uh, it's pretty much uh, changing live. Like you can see it on my screen as well. All right, so going to ask one stock, one line, all right, so that we can tabulate like what I mentioned right there. So what are three US stocks? So you can see like Tesla is one of those counters that a lot of people are asking about. All right, so just about you know, 30 more seconds, 30 more seconds, guys. Let me know what are the US stocks that you want me to cover. So, Today, we'll be looking at the US market, right? Okay, good. So it seems like we have a, quite a lot of counters, a lot of counters. Uh, let me just, um, it's kind of like tabulating, all right? Tabulating uh, quite a lot of counters. Okay, good. So 10 more seconds, guys. 10 more seconds before I put a hot to this uh, poll, all right? And we see if we have more time to cover more, all right? But just about 10 more seconds, right? So, okay, okay, good. Let, let me just go ahead to, to pause this, right? Let me go to pause this, right? So I would say that right now, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, good. Let me just push this up. Okay, awesome. So let's take a look at the stocks that you guys are asking about, right? Let me go ahead to see what are the stocks that you guys are asking about. Let's see. Okay, so I would say that uh, pretty much these are the few names that you guys are asking about. We have a lot of you asking on Tesla. All right, let me just go ahead to push it out for you. Um, Visa is one of those as well. So we have like Tesla, number one. Uh, number two will be a Visa. Let me just write it down, guys. Um, Tesla Visa, we have like Upstart as well, UPST, we have uh, Apple, is one of the most popular one, Apple, um, C, S-E-A, C Limited, I think that's one of you, a lot of you are asking as well, C, we have Alibaba, all right, Alibaba, we have Neo as well, all right, Neo, four, five, six, seven, all right, so let me see if we can find a few more counters, we have Neo, all right, and we have one more LMND, LMND. D, all right. So these are pretty much the, the most popular counters. A lot of you are asking about. Uh, we have like uh, AMD as well, AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. Okay, good. So what wow, we have, there's a lot of stocks, a lot of stocks, guys. So, okay, let me just put a hot, hot to this, right? So pretty much, I think these are the popular stocks that you guys are asking about. I'm not too sure if um, you know, these, these are pretty much what, what a lot of you are asking, but let me just go ahead to share with you the names that I have caught, got in terms of the top 10, right? Tesla, uh, Visa, we have uh, Upstart, all right, Upstart Apple, C Limited, Alibaba, Neo, um, AMD as well, and uh, LMND as well, all right? So these are pretty much the stocks that you guys are asking. All right, type yes, guys, type yes in the chat if you want me to dive into Tesla. Type yes in the comments below, all right? If you want to go into Tesla right now, I think since a lot of you are asking about Tesla, I think it's one of the, like, the most popular stocks. So we try to cover as many as possible. Of course, once we have covered these stocks, then if you have more time, I'll try to keep it short, maybe like an hour or so, or right? an hour or so, if you have more time and uh, before we try to cover some of those stocks that you guys are asking as well, right? So give me some time, right? So I think the first one will be Tesla, right? I think we have like uh, NVIDIA as well, all right? NVIDIA as well. Okay, let's go on to talk about Tesla. So where is Tesla? All right, so this is the Dow Jones. Right? For those of you who have just joined us, I think I just talked about the Dow Jones just now. And pretty much I mentioned that there are some short-term weakness right short-term weakness because we kind of broke that thirty-five thousand, and of course this omicron uh, news have kind of lead to like a sell down in the markets and, and we can approach something like thirty-three thousand two hundred to thirty-three thousand um six hundred, and that's where potentially we can see some bargain hunting coming back right so let's dive into tesla right now since a lot of you are asking about tesla this is one of the most popular 
I would say US stocks, uh, you know, that many of you are asking. So this is Tesla right here. I kind of like done a video on it on Tesla couple of weeks back and one of those really good up trending stock in fact it's not really um affected that much because of uh, of this omicron news or like the tech sector or sell down all right one of my favorite stocks and uh, we can see that we, we kind of like broke i, I, I talked about it many times I, I mentioned about this like um resistance level right here about 800 and the 900 it was pretty much the high we have seen in january and we kind of broke this like 800 and 900 level uh, somewhere in like um October, right? Just about a month plus back, we broke this level, and there were some upside targets that were drawn actually all the way to like thousand one, thousand two, right? So this is where we kind of headed to, uh, saw a little bit of profit taking because we have Elon Musk coming out and saying that he might want to like sell some of his stake, you know, to to like raise capital for taxes and all that, and the market kind of like sold off as well, right? But we sold off right here from like thousand two, all the way to around that one. 000, right 1000 level so i expecting like a 900 so i expecting like 900 to be a really good support you can see 900 was pretty much where we were uh the previous high which would now become like the support level but you can see like over the past like one month we didn't really hit to that 900 level you know somewhere around that 1000 mark right 1000 mark which is a psychological level as well all right buyers are starting to come back right buyers are starting to come back you can see this is where we saw a little bit of a bargain hunting we bounded came back down quite a little bullish candle right here next day started to see a green a green candlestick and this is where the rebound happened and we pretty much went back to like a thousand two and you know the market weakened and we sold off so now we're coming about one zero nine five right so where is like pretty much the support right now is there more upside we'll say that for tesla this one thousand um level you know not nine hundred but pretty much what one thousand level would be kind of like the new support level for now for the uptrend to continue um even further right even further so even though we see some weakness coming in we kind of like sold off but i think anything like above that 1000 level that that's where you can see some bargain hunting might come back again people might start to, to load up again as it consolidates from like thousand to thousand two so pretty much that is the range right now one thousand to one thousand two i think if i've got in near like a, a thousand level one zero 201010 I think it's somewhere in this range it could be a good rebound back up to that 1002 so 1002 a little bit of resistance that we've seen you can see we come like sort of a one two all right quite a, a bearish candle right here on the 22nd of uh, November just about two weeks back we saw this candle and that, that's where some weakness came out so 1002 would be what I call the immediate resistance now for Tesla so I think it looks quite okay it looks quite okay I think in fact on, on dips near that thousand dollars support level it could actually be a good opportunity all right to think about like getting into to load up i mean this is one of those really good longer term up trending counters we might see some short term weakness here and there but overall it still looks quite good in long term look, look at this right the, the great line 100 days moving average is pointing up above the blue line and i would say longer term it looks quite intact in terms of the up trend right so that would be tesla that would be tesla that stock number one right stock number one how many of you want to move on to stock number two right stock number two type two guys type two in the chat uh if you're still here you can still see and you can hear me i think we have more than 200 of you on board right now type two in the chat if you want to move on to the second stock that you guys are asking about let me know type two in the chat okay good i see a few uh we have like uh hi daphne poa hi uh poking joey and the two 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 okay hi to young okay so i can see your comments guys uh, yes so so agnes hi okay Two, two, at least two. Thomas, two, two, two. Josh, oh, hi, good to see you here. Okay, good. Let's move on to the next one, which will be, I think, Visa. I think a lot of you are asking about Visa as well. All right. And let's take a look at Visa. All right. So this is Visa right here. All right. You can see that we have seen a quite, I would say, quite a heavy selling after hitting a high somewhere around like in July. All right. We hit about 250 and it's just been like coming down and down and down. All right. All the way to around the $190 level right here so what is the outlook i would say that right now uh for for this visa right you can see that we were actually seeing some good support i think for those of you who are asking about visa it was quite a good long-term uh up training counter right somewhere around here you can see it was quite a good long-term training counter we kind of like hit it to a high of 250 and you know i would say that somewhere around the 220 220 would be quite a good support level all right somewhere in like uh july august we kind of like approach this 220 look at this right here it's about 220 we kind of like you know that's that's where we might see a little bit of rebound you can see the up trend still looks quite intact above 220 all right about 220 in the longer term over short term we did see like a, a bit breaking right and unfortunately right you can see that over the past um you know 
one month plus, right? We have broken this 220 uh, support level. So short term wise, we did see a little bit of weakness. And of course, like over the past one week, you know, Visa got hit as well due to the, you know, tech sector sell off when the market started to sell as well. So I would say that um, right now, I would prefer to see a little bit more stability. Normally, we want to wait for more stability rather than it, you know, just trying to find like new recent lows. We want to see some stability because we have went below that 200 psychological level as well. 200 would be what we call a psychological level. So we kind of like went down over the past week on this Omicron news. All right, so not that good, not that good. In the short term, you see that there are some signs of the trend starting to turn down already. Look at this, the green line is pointing down. Um, in terms of the longer term, uh, look, look at this, right? The red line <clears throat> is what we call the 100 days moving average. It's kind of like sloping down. And, you know, I, I think if we were to like stay below the 200, that, that's where we might cross back down below the 200 days moving average. So not that good. If, if that happens, that is where we can potentially see a little bit of a weakness in terms of the downtrend slowly uh, starting to take shape. So I think if you're looking to like bargain hunt or buy on dips, uh, you can consider, but I, I think maybe I want to see some stability, right? Support-wise, maybe the next one will be around the 180, or I can see that was where we were somewhere in like October, just about a year back, one year back, we saw it coming down and then we saw a good rebound. So hopefully we see some good bullish uh, reversal candle here. Hold, we want to see it hold, you know, not just like one or two or three days, but over like a week or something, you see a good rebound, a good bullish candle. That's where potentially we might see hopefully some upside or a rebound happening back to like 200 and maybe 220. I think that, that would be decent. But right now, if you ask me in the short term, uh, we might actually see a little bit more weakness in the short term based on the moving averages. They're all turning down and the fact that we actually went below the 200 over the past week, right? So that would be Visa. That's stock number two, which all of you are asking about, all right? And let's look at the next one, which will upstart UPSTART, all right? Upstart Holdings. Okay, so this is upstart holding, right? Upstart Holdings right here. And um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those good stocks. I mean, fundamentally, they're like, I think this uh, it's a financial kind of like a banking, uh, disrupting the entire banking sector. You know, this company is able to allow banks to do like dish out loans much faster at a lower interest rate and all that, right? So it's one of those good firms, but unfortunately we broke the 300 support level, came down and a little bit of weakness so far, all right? And, and we are pretty much back to this 180, you can see 180, $200 level. That is pretty much the support level. So I think this level is quite key. So over the past one week, same thing, we saw weakness coming back. Uh, I think 180, 200 is where we can hopefully expect to see some good support coming in. This is where the 200 days moving average line is as well. And it was originally, all right, look at this right here. It was originally the resistance since March. You can see right here, since March, when we broke the 180 to 200 level somewhere in, in August, you can see the upside really started. So we are pretty much back to this 180 to 200 level. So yeah, it's only one day. So I think we, we probably have to see, right? In the next few days, hopefully we can like, just, just maintain above the 180. If not, it will not be so good. If not, it will not be so good, all right? And we have to see how, how it plays out in, in terms of the news as well for the entire market. But pretty much back to this really good support at 180 to 200. So let's just hope that it holds. Uh, for now, if not, then uh, then you then might see a little bit of weakness coming in, you know, from 180, maybe all the way back to like 120 to 140, all right? So that would be upstart uh, support 180. Right now, we are pretty much just right there at the support count kind of closing at the day low yesterday. So don't look that strong in the short term as well, all right? Uh, even though this is one of those good fundamentally strong companies, but uh, yeah, it has been affected as well, right? Over the past uh, few weeks of the sell down. Okay, so that would be stock number three all right so number three right? so a lot of you are asking about um this stock called apple as well which is stock number four type four guys type four in the chat if you want to go on to stock number four which would be apple and of course give me a like and share all right give me a like and share if you have found some you know you have found it useful so far before we move on we try to cover as many stocks as possible all right type four in the comments below hit the like and share button guys if you're still here we have like more than 200 of you on board already Okay, four, four, four. Yes, go ahead to hit the like and share button. Of course, I think there should be like a bell uh, notification somewhere. All right, there should be a bell notification somewhere. But click, click on it. All right, and then uh, you know, in the future when we go live, you will not be able to, you will not miss out. I think you will get a notification as well. Right, so you can go ahead to click on the notification. Thanks. I see a lot of you hitting the like and share button. Thank you so much, guys. So let's move on to stock number four, which would be Apple. Right, Apple is one of those stocks that I like as well. Very, very strong growth company, fundamentally strong. Let's take a look at Apple right now. A P P L E. Sorry. Okay, good. 
plastic load. Okay, so this is Apple right here. Okay, Apple, let's take a look. Okay, Apple trading about 165, 164 right here, about 164. I think we can just go to draw like a resistance level around the 170. This is where we kind of like touched yesterday. So Apple has been one of those really strong companies. I think very, very strong uptrend. All right, strong uptrend. We have covered it uh, a few times. All right, um, okay, let me just go ahead to remove this. Uh, like and share. So this is Apple right here. I think we can see it quite clearly. Okay, trading about one six four. Right. So yeah, we have seen like more strength in Apple over the past week. Kind of like um, you know, going against the rest of the the stocks. You know, when when people are like pushing down, the market is lower, but Apple is like pushing higher. Kind of like attempting to break higher as well. Right. And we have uh, kind of like approached this one seventy. Right, one seventy level, which is a good thing. All right. You can see. We have, let me just go to draw it for you right now. I would say that right now. Uh, Apple is one of those good uptrending stocks. So right now, I would say that support-wise, we somewhere around the 155. You can see this is where uh, the 20 days moving average line is as well. I'm going to draw some upside targets right here from 155 all the way to about 170. All right, so yeah, if it does pull back a little bit based on, I mean, due to like the market weakness and all that, it could actually be a good opportunity, right? Somewhere 155 to maybe 150, even give it a bit of leeway. That's where all the moving averages are as well. So I think Apple is quite good, right, in terms of the uptrend. Very, very strong uptrend. Okay, this is the red line pointing up, blue line pointing up. So very, very strong uptrend. All right, and short term, we actually come kind of attempted to, to come like push higher when the rest of the market is like coming lower. All right, so that's a good sign. Of course, this is quite a, a bearish candle. We have seen right there. You can see something like what we call an inverse hammer. All right, or, or kind of like, you know, touching a high of 170 and then, you know, buyers like kind of like attempting to break the level, but sellers came back and push it back down and come like close at the day low just yesterday. So even though we have like approach 170, which is like a near term resistance level, sellers are starting to come back there. All right. So this is normal. I think people want to take some profit as well. All right. So we might actually see uh, a, bit, a bit like, you know, pushing back down below 165. We might kind of like see a bit of weakness, maybe back to like 150 to 155. And it could be a good level. Uh, to start thinking about getting in again. That is for Apple. I think this is one of those good companies on, on in the short term. We might see weakness because of this candle, especially we to break back down below 165. But as it dips to this 150 to 155, I think that could be a good opportunity right to get in again. So this is Apple, I think one of those good um, stocks as well, very, very strong uptrending uh, stock that you can also think about getting in, especially if we see weakness. Uh, it could be a good opportunity, all right, to kind of like load up to catch um, the rebound as well. All right, so that would be Apple, and that would be stock number four. All right, stock number four. All right, let's move on to stock number five, which all of you are asking about, and that would be C Limited. Right, C Limited. Let's take a look at it right here. Okay, so this is C Limited. Right, so what, what do you guys think? Let, how many of you think that it's a little bit more uh, bearish for now? All right, it's a little bit more bearish for now. Let me know in the comments below. Is it like more bearish or, or um, bullish? Or maybe it's just like a short-term bullish before we see a more, you know, more strength coming back. If, or it might be a good opportunity. Let me know in the comments below what you think about C Limited before I dive into the charts right now. Okay, I see a lot of you coming on board. We have like more than 200 or close to um, 300 of you. Welcome to this um, Facebook live show called Ask Me Any Stock, guys. For those who have just joined us, uh, pretty much we'll be looking at some of the US, the United States, US market, the US stocks that you guys are asking about. And we have kind of like did a live poll just now whereby I kind of asked you guys on the stock. So later when we cover all the stocks, we'll see if we can cover more of those stocks which you guys are asking about, right? So now we are at C Limited, which a lot of you are asking about. And let's see what are your comments. I think a lot of you are saying it's a little bit more bearish. Um, uh, yeah, I think Thomas Fu, you're saying it's uh, bearish as well. Thomas Tan is uh, weak. All right, so I can see your comments, guys, and I'm putting your comments uh, right up. I think if you can see, uh, that, that's where everybody will be able to see your comments as well. Uh, Lawrence Chen is bearish. Tony, bearish as well. All right. Um, okay. Um, yeah, broke the 200-day uh, moving average as well. Andy, you're saying it's bearish. So, so I think some of you are, most of you are a little bit more bearish. So let's take a look at um, C Limited. So C Limited is one of those actually, I would say since last year, right? Since last year, May, June, we have seen a, a really good move up, right? From like 60, 70, 80 dollars, we have seen a really good move up. I would say very, very strong uh, uptrend. In fact, look at this right here. We can kind of like draw uh, what we call an upward stopping um, channel support line right here. You can see kind of like a very, very gentle uptrend. 
uh, the red and the blue line uh, is like the 100 days moving average and the 200 days moving average are like pointing up and red above the blue. So very, very strong uptrend, I would say. A couple of weakness here and there in the beginning of the year when we saw the technology sector sold off, but we found some support and rebounded uh, from this 200 days moving average and started to push higher all the way to around the 380, all right? So yeah, over the past like, you know, two weeks to a month, unfortunately, all right, I was expecting some good support actually coming in around the 300. Look at this, right, 300 was pretty much a, a really good support level that we've been holding since like August, about two months. And when it dipped this level, you know, expecting some really good support. Hopefully, you know, we see some good reversal candle uh, happening, but we kind of broke that 300 and it's pretty much to that 280, right? 280 right here, this was originally the resistance. We went up to 280 and that gave way as well. So 280 would be a, like a better support as where the 200 days moving average is as well. But you know, yesterday, all right, we kind of like sold by more than five to six percent, all right, for C limited together with the other tech stocks. And um, yeah, mainly due to like as I say, the um the Fed chairman Jerome Powell kind of coming out and saying that uh you know, in terms of like interest rate hikes, it come like it might be earlier, all right, in, uh, or come like sooner rather than later, all right. And that's where many many of those um, you know, tech stocks got hit as well. So not really on the Omicron variant news, but because of like Omicron variant coming out, that's where, you know, inflationary pressures can surge up more as well. I'm not too sure how, but basically, you know, it might surge up more and that's where the Fed might actually need to raise or hike interest rates earlier. And that's not a good thing in terms of the in terms of the technology sector, right? So we are pretty much back to this support level. Let's take a look at where we are right now. So it's about 261, all right? And to give it a bit of a, um, uh, in terms of like perspective, we are back to this level right here, right? So this is where in June to like July, all right, June to July, we actually saw some support right here. You can see some support right here. We found it about one, two, and three times around the 260 level, around the 260 level, right? So that I would say is where we are right now, around 260. So it's only like one day and we saw quite a heavy sell down yesterday. So in terms of the short term, um, we might actually see a little bit of weakness right right here. And hopefully we, that's, that's where we hope, see some good consolidation above that 260, above that 260. All right. And, and yeah, hopefully we see some good consolidation and eventually climbing back up to that you know, 300 to 280 level and, you know, Going back above 300 would be a good sign of that reversal coming in again. But right now, I think that, you know, that, that's where we're seeing some selling, unfortunately. All right. And, and this is the back to this support around 260. All right. So maybe that it. I think for those of you who are looking to get in uh, on dips, all right, to kind of like catch a rebound, um, that, that's good. Right. The thing I would say that it's good to see a little bit of stability. So normally when we see prices coming down uh, that fast, all right. And, and of course, there's still a lot of uncertainty. Uh, I think it's good to see a little bit of stability in terms of the prices hanging just above some of those good support levels like the 260 and the next one if you want to give it a little bit more um you know the next level down all right that would be around that 200 level you can see 200 is where uh pretty much we were since like the beginning of the year so we were actually consolidating right here you can see from 200 to two you know 260 right 200 to 260 and that is the range right now again right here so from 200 to 260. So yes, I, I think that you know if we were to you know break the 260, then yeah, we might actually see a little bit more weakness. All right. So you wouldn't want to rush to get in, probably wait to see a bit more stability. Um, you know, see some clear signs of a reversal, uh, you know, kind of like attempting to, to push higher again. Uh, that's that's where you can start to think about bargain hunting. But right now, all right, just take note if the 260 would break down, unfortunately, that's where we might see some short-term uh, weakness coming in again. Okay, so that would be like C limited with stock number five, right? So I think a lot of you are asking about this stock called. Alibaba as well. Alibaba. Let me just go ahead and show you. So this is Alibaba um, right here. All right. Alibaba. So how many of you think that this stock is like bearish, right? It's, it's like more bearish. Type type yes or no in the comments below if you think it's like more bearish for Alibaba type yes in the comments below. Yes, yes, yes. Han Hock, yes. Um, Lynette, you, yes, you're saying it's yes as well. Uh, Buncha, you're saying it's that parabolic, all right. Eileen, yes. Uh, Joshua, this is a... Oh, Joshua, you're saying what? This is a slide, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. So Doris, hi. Good to see you. Hi, Doris. Um, yeah, Tom, Estelle, yes. Okay, good. So I think 
uh, most of you are like quite, uh, I, mean, I would say, saying that this, this counter is quite varied. So this is Alibaba right here. I think uh, we have covered a few times on, on this stock, Alibaba, and this is pretty much a stock, a tech stock in the uh, China, all right, in China, all right. And of course, we have seen weakness in many of those Chinese tech stocks like Alibaba, Tencent, JD.com and all that because of the Chinese government kind of like cracking down, all right, uh, and making sure that these companies are not like, you know, being too too big to fail or like kind of like engaging in like monopolistic uh, uh, measures, right? So yeah, so kind of like this is what is happening, right, over the past like one year, all right, and of course we have like the NIPO that was cancelled as well somewhere last year here, and, and that's where we started to see the trend turning. So normally, as I say, for like a downtrending counter, you can see this is pretty much in a downtrend, right? It seems like, you know, somewhere uh, at the beginning of the year, we saw this red line, the 200 days moving average turning down, all right, crossing down below the blue line. So pretty much in a downtrend, of course, we can also draw what we call this channel resistance line right here, all right, whereby, you know, it has been forming what we call lower highs, right? Lower highs, that is not a good thing whereby, you know, each time it pushes up a little bit, sellers came back, and push it back down, right? So that's not a good thing in terms of like, uh, you know, the, the downtrend being more firm, all right? And, and, you know, buyers just not being able to push it above that previous high rather than, you know, you just push up a little bit, but sellers come back and push it even lower. So that's not a good thing, right? And let's look at where we are. So we are coming about one, two, two. So can, can you imagine if you're like buying? So normally in the downtrend, I think for those of you who have followed me long enough, um, normally in the downtrend, we, we try not to buy. Imagine you have like gotten at 300 and 280, 250, 200, uh 160 150 and and now it's like one two two all right and you're just like buying and buying and buying and, and you know because it's like cheaper and cheaper uh it's not a good thing right i think if it's a downtrend you want to really wait or if you really want to get in to catch like a rebound in the long term i think you just want to nibble a little bit at support rebounds you get out but you don't want to just be buying all the way down because you know that, that's where you get stuck all right and you're just showing like good money over bad money just to average down uh, you know, thinking that you will recover, but there are still some signs of a uh, of, of weakness, right? So you can see that over the past, like, one week, two weeks plus, right, we broke this 140, all right, 140 level, all right, we kind of like rebounded in October, but we broke this 140 level right here, okay, and we went to that 130, all right, 130 was quite critical, guys, look at this, 130 is where we were, all right, where, where we were here, somewhere in 200, one eight, all right. Even before the current situation that we are in, right? Two zero one eight, kind of like found a little bit of like a double or a double bottom right here before the rebound started. So that was like the one thirty. So we're pretty much back to that the two zero one eight level. And yes, unfortunately, over the past two days we broke the one thirty as well, right? So if you ask me right now, that the trend is really down, right? And the fact that we broke the one thirty, we can potentially see a little bit more weakness all the way to maybe about one ten to maybe the one hundred level. I think that could actually be like more downside for Alibaba right here, maybe 110 first. And then if the 110 would give way, then it's maybe to the 100. So a little bit more weak, I would say this is more uh, like a, a down trending counter. I mean, compared to like counters whereby we have covered like uh, maybe like um, Tesla or maybe like Apple, you know, those those are strong up trading counters. I mean, it comes down, you can see that it comes down to a certain support level and people start to buy again and start to rebound back up again. So there are kind of like, you know, many, many support levels that will form as it comes down and that's where people can start to bargain hunt. But for companies like this that is in a downtrend, you can see that it doesn't really rebound back up. It's not in the, it's not like, you know, trying to find new highs, but it's like trying to find new lows. So I would say if it is were to, I mean, if it's like in the downtrend and would break a key support level, like the 140 and even the 130 right now, then you want to be careful that that's where we can potentially see a little bit more weakness, right? And until we really see some clear signs of the reversal. If not, you, you want to be careful you're thinking to buy. I think we don't want to just buy because it's cheap and cheap and cheap. Can you imagine if you buy all the way down? That is where you, you're, you know, you have a lot of funds that will be stuck with, all right? So that would be Alibaba, all right? I mean, main weakness was because of the China government crackdown. We're still seeing it, I think, in the in terms of like the private education sector as well. The government is cracking down on, on companies as well in that in that area. And, you know, there's still a lot of measures restricting uh, companies like this, right? So a little bit more in a downtrend for Alibaba, right? So that would be like stock number six. And stock number seven, right, guys? Type seven, number seven, if you want to go to this company, all right, which is like, Neo, all right, Neo, Neo Limited. I think a lot of you are asking about Neo as well, all right, Neo type seven in the chat, if you want to go to Neo, right, one of the other electric vehicle plays uh, that you guys are asking about. <clears throat> so guess if you have liked so far, guys, if you have liked what we have covered so far and maybe your stocks that you asked have been covered, I would appreciate, guys, if you can give me like a like or a little heart shape, 
all right, a little heart shape or like a blue button, type the like or the heart shape button. That would really help to us to reach out to more people. Uh, yeah, go ahead to type the like and uh, heart shape button, all right. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, good. So yeah, I can see like uh, a lot of you um doing that. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, that will help to reach out to and like and share as well, guys. If you have like we have covered the stocks that you are asking about, if you have not covered the stocks that you're asking about, hopefully we'll cover it, guys. We'll have more time. Hopefully, we try to cover as many stocks as possible. But thank you so much for those who have just joined us. We have like more than 200 of you over here already. Okay, good. Okay, let's move on. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, so what is the, the number seven? All right, number seven will be like NIO, NIO. I think that's the stock which a lot of you are asking about as well. NIO, NIO. All right, let's take a look at NIO. All right, let's take a look at NIO. All right, so this is NIO. Okay, let's take a look. All right, let's see where we are right now. So I think NIO is pretty straightforward. All right, pretty straightforward. It's one of those stocks in the um, EV, electric vehicle space, something like Tesla, but of course NIO, I would say pretty much focused in China. All right, and that would be pretty much the range right now for NIO, right? Quite clearly, you can see that since like, you know, beginning of the year to now, it's not really an uptrend. It's also not really in a downtrend, all right? I would say it's a little bit more, what? And we can guess, type, type the answer, what do you think is the trend right now? What do you think is the trend, guys, for NIO? Is it like up, down, or what? Side, sideways? Let me know, guys, if you feel that it's a little bit more sideways for Neil. Sideways. Okay, David, you're saying it's uh, sideways as well. Um, ranging. Han Hock, you're saying that it's ranging. Good. I can see your comments, guys. If Lin Chum, you're saying that it's consolidating. Correct. That's a good one, right? So consolidation, something like what we call sideways. Uh, Lynette, you're saying sideways as well. Tanuch, sideways as well. Side, sideways, Andy Wong, sideways. So I can see your comments, guys. Lawrence, sideways, range bound as well. Uh, Kuisin, you're saying it's range bound. Okay, good. Can of see sideways. Okay, good. So yeah, I think I would say that it's pretty much uh, sideways for now. All right. Uh, not bad, but it's not good as well. All right. It's just like moving sideways over the past like uh, 10 months. And what is the range, right? What is the range? I can see that the range is pretty much from 30, 30 dollars support level. You can see that is where we have rebounded. I would say near it somewhere in March. In May, we rebounded. We neared it again in October, rebounded again. And that is pretty much the range for now. Just to be a bit clearer, all the way from like 30 to that 50 level, right? 50.0, right? 30 to 50 is like a $20, right? $20 kind of like uh, uh, a range, right? And let me just go ahead to draw this upside target. So I think right now we are like 38, which is like 40, somewhere around 40, which is like in between that 30 and 50, right? We're somewhere in the center. All right, right here. So I would say that in terms of the, the upside uh, reward to risk ratio, it, it's a little bit hard to say, right? Because we can go either way. We can actually come like come back down to like 30 or we can also go up to that 50, right? So we are right in the middle. So normally we try to avoid uh, levels like this because we're right in the center. In terms of the reward to risk upside is not really a, lo a lot because we're right in the middle, right? We can go up and go down, right? And, and we are right in the middle. So maybe you're looking to buy on dips, all right? If you're I mean, kind of like looking at this counter in terms of the fundamentals, in terms of it being like Tesla, uh, like in China and all that. <clears throat> yeah, then you can consider as well. I think if we approach this really good um, near this level, like 30 to 35, you can see right here. Okay, let me just go to draw it for you. I think in this level right here, 30 to 35, right? 30 to 35, you can see this is where potentially we have seen a couple of like three or four rebounds. So I think if you to near this level, 30 to 35, maybe 31, 34, 33, I don't know, somewhere around there. And it holds above 30. I mean, you, you might want to have a stop loss just below 30 as well. Maybe have a stop loss at 28 or you know 20, 20, 20, 27, right? Just in case it breaks down, you don't want to have a plan to get out. So of course, if it does break at 30, then it's not that good, right? Because we have been holding above, you know, for like more than a year. And if it does break at 30, that is definitely some signs of weakness coming back. And if you want to plan to get out, right? But anything above 30, yeah, we might actually kind of like see a little bit of a rebound back to that, you know. 50, right? So we're not talk too far. I think we're not, I mean, like some, some of you might be asking whether is it like 60 or 70, but I think right now 50, right? 50 would be kind of like a psychological resistance level. And that's where potentially uh, we might see a little bit of uh, upside happening to there first, right? So from 30 all the way to 50, that is pretty much for new. Uh, we are pretty much in a sideways movement for now. And and uh, yeah, that, that is the, that's the range if you're looking to get in somewhere near the 30 to 35. I think if it, if it does dip to those level, you can kind of like consider as well. Okay, so that is for NIO, which is stock number seven, right? Stock number seven, right? 
Okay, let's take a look at stock number eight, which would be uh, AMD, all right, AMD, which is Advanced Micro Devices. I think a lot of you are asking about Advanced uh, Micro Devices as well, all right, stock number eight, all right, stock number eight, all right. So this is one of those good, really good uh, long-term uptrending counters as well, all right, and uh, we have seen a little bit of a weakness as well in the short term, all right, when we hit to this like 160 level, but I think it looks quite good, right? So quite a good company, right? Since like three months back in, in July, you can see we broke this 100 level. This 100 was like a psychological level. We were consolidating from like 100 to 120 and eventually we broke the 120 and that's where the upside really started all the way up to, to right now here, right? So over the past like one, two weeks, we have seen uh, what I say, uh, I would say that some kind of like a profit taking as we approach this like 160 level, 160, 165, we, you want to give it a bit of leeway but that is pretty much the resistance so support level if you can i, I mean somewhere maybe around the 140 right 140 i think if we dance deep to the 130 to 140 level it could actually be a, a good opportunity again to do like get in i think that is where some bargain hunting can actually come back again so yeah amd advanced micro devices is one of those companies that we like as well i think in the longer term is a play on the entire uh, 5g all right internet of things iot uh, pretty much semiconductor firm producing all these chips, microchips, and then uh, yeah, one of those semiconductors that we like as well, right? So riding in, in terms of uh, you know the economy, you know, moving into five G, whereby everything needs chips, you know, your server, cloud computing, and everything. Uh, with you know this, this company uh, are one of those uh, to benefit as well. Okay, so this AMD, I think it looks quite good in terms of the trend. The longer term uptrend looks quite intact uh, above that one twenty, but. Maybe not even 120. Right now, support, as I say, is about 130 to 140. That is where we can potentially see uh, some good bargain hunting coming back again. All right, all the way back up to the 160 level. Okay, so that would be AMD. Okay, good. Let's take a look at let's take a look at um the poll again. All right, let me just see if you guys are asking. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so this is the poll, all right, and we have like covered quite a few stocks like Neo. Um, okay, I think a lot of you are asking about NVIDIA, Visa, C, Apple, we have covered. Uh, let's see, I think Microsoft, some of you are asking about Tesla, we have covered. Alibaba, we have covered. Let's see. Um, okay, good. I think maybe we have covered like NVIDIA. NVIDIA is like another stock. Let's take a look at NVIDIA Corp as well. Let's take a look at NVIDIA Corp. Okay, so NVIDIA is one of those really good tech stock as well and uh, a play in the entire semi-con uh, industry as well. So we kind of like pushed to a new high, I would say over the past, uh, you know, two months, right? Over the past two months, we broke this like, you know, two, uh, 250 level, 230 level. You can see the upside really started, the uptrend really started to form all the way to around like 350. So a little bit of resistance around 350 and that's where over the past week, same thing. We saw some um, selling coming back again, and we are trading about 314, right? 314. So let's take a look at where um, we are right now in terms of the support level. The support level should be around at 280, 280 to maybe about 300 level, just to give it a little bit of leeway. I think that is pretty much the support level right here. I think if it does dip to like the 300 to 280, that's where some bargain hunting can potentially start to come back again. So yes, I think Nivea is one of those good companies that we like as well in terms of the, the, the trend, all right, in terms of the uptrend, it looks quite good in the long term. Short term, we started to push up as well, a little bit of profit taking there, 350, all right, and, and that's where uh, we are seeing some, some selling right now. So you can see a bit of consolidation right here in the short term, but we're still above this 20 days uh, moving average green line as well. But I think it still looks good in terms of the uptrend, uh, and in fact, it could be a good, you know, good opportunity to get in again, all right, if we were to dip to like, the 280 to 300 level. Okay, so let's. This is pretty much a Nvidia stock number nine. Okay, so the the time now is about 8 55 p.m. So we are kind of like uh, heading into that one hour mark, right? So maybe about 10 15 more minutes, guys. Let me know 10 about 10 15 more minutes. We we'll try to cover as not as many stocks as possible, all right? And let's take a look. So, so I think some of you are asking about uh upstart. Yeah, I think upstart guys are uh, willing. We have covered upstart as well. You can take a look at the replay. For upstart and i think han you're saying that uh, investors choose nvidia over amd yeah any good i would say uh semiconducting firm all right even like applied materials as well one of my favorite as well you can take a look at that 
and uh, not too bad. All right. Um, okay, let's take a look. Uh, I think uh, Moonwai, you're saying buy AMD. Yeah, AMD is not too bad. All right. Avoid Neo. All right. We covered Neo as well. Uh, Moonwai. So I think Moon Neo guys, we've covered Neo. I think pretty much side away. So we want to go for like strong up trending stocks, which are kind of like trading lower at a discount at those really good support levels. That's where you can think about getting in. All right. Okay, let's take a look at crop strike. I think crop strike. Is, let me see if crop strike is one of those that a lot of you are asking about. We have covered most of the stocks already, all right? And we have like Microsoft and, uh, okay, maybe PayPal. I think PayPal, PayPal as well. I think a lot of you are asking about PayPal. Let's take a look at PayPal. Okay, PayPal, let's take a look. This is... Um, PayPal, right? PayPal right here. P-A-Y, PayPal holdings. Okay, so definitely some signs of weakness, right? Some signs of weakness for PayPal, all right? Where we broke this level, all right? This is like the 220 uh, support level for PayPal. You can see we kind of broke the 220 and, you know, the moving averages were all starting to turn down. Okay, so not that good, all right? Not that good for, for PayPal. I think there was some, you know, in terms of news flow coming over the past one month, I think there was some uh, earnings announcement and it kind of like came in below expectations and it kind of like broke and gap down below the 220. So not a good sign when we just gap down below a very critical uh, support level. So 220, you can see guys, it was originally the resistance level we have been holding above since like, you know, a year, all right, a year, and, and we just like just went down in one day, all right. So not a good sign, all right. And that's that's I mean, so, so after that, you can see we bounded a bit, but back to this one eight zero, right? One eight zero. You can see this is like where we are right now, uh, the support level at one eighty, and that's where we have re been rebounding over the past like you know one and a half year. You can see we saw a little bit of bullish reversal candle here around one eighty, one eighty, rebounded, rebounded. And this is where we are right now. So it's only like one day, guys. But I would say, um, just just be careful. I wouldn't want to like just get in on this company because, um, in terms of the trend, there are some signs of weakness in terms of like the moving averages turning down. Look, look at this, right? Let's say the red line has turned down and it come like point down below the blue line. So some signs of the trend turning down as well from the uh, longer term moving average, longer term trend turning from like up to down. So not a good thing. And of course, the short term, we just broke the 250 and the 220. So, it, you know, it's, it's some signs of weakness. So I'm just afraid that the 180 with the breakdown, that's why we can potentially see, you know, more weakness as well. So I wouldn't want to buy now. I think I want to see a bit more stability because if we were to break 180, we might go to like 140 or 160 as well. All right? So until we see some clear uh, signs of, of stability, prices holding some of those, Holding above some of those good support levels, then you can think about getting on you know, these companies, even though it looks really cheap. But you know, you just want to be careful because if it breaks certain support, there's a potential we might hit lower, especially if there are some signs of the trend uh, turning down for now. All right. So this is for PayPal holding, which is pretty much stock number 10, right? Stock number 10. And let's move on to I think probably the last stock. I think that would be like Microsoft. I think Microsoft, some of you are asking about Microsoft as well. Let's take a look at Microsoft. Okay, Microsoft. I think Microsoft is one of those very strong, I would say, uptrending counter. Not really uh, hit much due to the recent market weakness. We have seen really good, strong um, support coming in around 320 to, to 330. All right. And, and in fact, I think those are levels whereby if it dips a little bit, I think it could be a good opportunity to, to get it again all the way back to the rebound of 350 right 350 is like the temporary uh resistance for now for for microsoft yeah so microsoft not too bad i think all of you know microsoft right and, and they are going into like a uh, cup computing they have office 365 uh whereby it's like recurring revenue and they have a huge cash power as well all right so yeah i think microsoft is one of those firms that you can uh yeah one of those better firms i would say compared to like maybe paypal or, or you know alibaba that is like you know down all right new moving sideways i think i put prefer stocks like this which are in an uptrend and they kind of like hit it to those um these levels all right okay good i think steady you're asking so some of you have questions let me just put up your questions right here i think steady trying you're asking do we need a paid account for seeing such chart at investing note yeah for so those of you are uh, asking me where do i get this chance this chance are actually from investing note all right just go to google it um investing note.com all right, and that's the way you can come like sign up for free. All right, it's free, it's entirely free uh, to log in. It's something like what we call like the social media, I think Facebook and all that. That's where you ask about, you know, you look at your friends' pictures and all that. But for investing notes, we are looking at stocks, right? Singapore stocks, US stocks. And you can like, you can comment, you can share. 
Uh, so it's like the social media for stocks, right? So go to investingnote.com and their charts is what I use daily. And I think it's not too bad. All right, not too bad. It's like live, almost live charts. And then you can go do your analysis as well. So this is like, uh, yeah, you don't need a paid account for seeing charts and invest investing note. It is free, 100% free. And I've been using it for many years. I can't believe it's free and it's live. And that's what I have been using. All right. Okay, so let's move on. So that's stock number 11. Now let's take a look at CrowdStrike. And CrowdStrike is one of those uh, companies that a lot of you are asking about. Let's see where we are right now. Okay. Okay, good. So I think we have like more than 200 of you coming on board. Already. We have reached like the one hour mark. Uh, if you guys are still here and, and you know, you, you're you still following me, type yes, all right? Type yes in the comments below. All right, maybe we'll just cover one more stock. Type yes in the comments below. If you can see and you can hear me and you're still good to go or if I have already covered the stocks that you are asking about, type yes in the comments below. Let me know, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Yes, do give me a like and a heart shape. Hit the heart shape button, guys. Hit the like and share button, guys. It will definitely help me uh, to reach out to more people on Facebook and YouTube as well. All right, hit the like and share button and we'll see uh, if we can uh, cover like just one or one or two more stocks, right? So this is crop strike here. Crop strike over here. Okay, good, awesome, All right? So yes, this is what I see on my phone. I'm not too sure if you guys are saying this, but we can see a lot of hearts and a lot of the comments. Uh, give like and share. Thank you, Marco. Hi, Yvonne, Daniel, Irene, uh, Chin Chao, Wei Lim. Hi, okay, awesome. Okay, so let's move on to Crop Strike, which is like pretty much stock. Number... 12, right? Stock number 12. So this is CrowdStrike. So CrowdStrike is in what we call the cyber uh, security space. Okay. And, you know, one of those good long-term uptrending counter as well. You can see since like last year, uh, March, April, May, very, very strong uptrend. You can see it started to consolidate, push up, consolidate. And we were actually consolidating slowly higher from like the 180 to 220 range and eventually going to that 280 to 300. So quite a good uptrend. But, you know, short term, it was a little bit volatile, right? A little bit volatile as is one of those like tech stocks in the cyber security space, right? And over the past, like I would say um, two weeks to a month, we did see a little bit of weakness. And in fact, I was actually, actually expecting a little bit of support coming in around the 230 level. So I kind of like did a video on CropStrike as well around the 230 level. Look at this, right? 230 was pretty much the resistance level somewhere in like April. We broke it, right? Went all the way to around like 270, 300 level. And that was where we traded back down again, right, to that 230. So 230 was pretty much like the resistance turned support. We rebounded, we nearly rebounded, and we kind of approached it just last week, right? Just last week, right here, you can see that this was where we were somewhere on the 23rd, 24th of November, about a week back, just um, just you know, before the entire Omicron news came out and you know, it kind of like escalated and the whole world knew about it, right? So that was just where we were just about a week ago. So about a week ago, we were just actually right at this, um, you know, 230, 230 support level. And in fact, we did see what we call a little good, I mean, bullish reversal candle right here. This is what we call like a doji or something like a hammer. We have a long lower shadow. All right. And, you know, it's only like two days. So I mentioned about, you know, if by seeing these candles there, and I mean, in this range right here at 230, whereby we did see a couple of rebound one, to look at, look at this, right? This is like a bullish candle with rebound. So when we saw it right here, it could actually be a good sign of it rebounding, especially if we were to break back up above that 240, I mean, above the high of this reversal candle days, maybe above that 240. I think that is where, uh, that's where the upside can, can you know, the reversal can start to happen, all right? But unfortunately, right, the next day, we had this Omicron news came in, coming in, all right? It didn't really break the 240. And we, we kind of like just went below the 230 support level again. All right, and pretty much back to this 200, right? I think all of you would know 200 is a, what we call a psychological uh, level, right? 200 is a psychological level as well. I think, uh, I think NVIDIA, I think some of you are asking about NVIDIA. We have covered NVIDIA again. So for those of you who want to find out uh, some of those stocks that we have covered and you have missed, not to worry, you can find it in the, uh, in, in the, the replay. You can watch the replay as well. It will be on Facebook, on my Facebook page. You can go in to watch the replay as well. So not to worry, right? So we have covered like, 
let, let me just go through very quickly what are some of the stocks we have covered, right? Um, we have covered like Tesla, Visa, Upstart, Apple, C Limited, Alibaba, Neo, okay, um, AMD, all right, <clears throat> AMD, and we have covered Nvidia, Microsoft, PayPal as well, and now we are talking about Crocs, right? So it's like 12 counters, right? 12 counters already in the US market, all right? Okay, so let, let's move on, right? So this is Crocs, right? So I mentioned about right now we are at about the 200 level, right? 200 level, you can see we kind of broke down yesterday, past three days, we broke the 230, we are back to the 200 level. So I'll say right now, <clears throat> in terms of the short term, right? Yeah, we are just right at this 200 support level. You can see we kind of rebounded from it, we neared it, rebounded, it was where we were in, in like June, all right? And, and this is pretty much back to this support range right here. You can give it a bit of leeway, leeway all right? Maybe about 180 to 200 level right 180 to 200 level i think if we can approach these levels and hopefully you know just like what we have seen in like you know march in march in, in april in may where we you know saw a little bit of stability prices rebounding coming back down rebounding coming back down but you know kind of like finding a, a new support base over the next few weeks at this level 180 200 then yeah i think that that is still quite it's still quite okay just of the longer term because in long term right you can see that is where you know the longer term moving average are still pointing up. Look at this, right? The red is still above the blue. Of course, there are some signs of it turning down, but it's still hard to say because it's only like a few days whereby we broke the 230 and you know, and, and we're just like above 200 now, right? So yeah, I think we can hopefully stay above this level and see a rebound back up to 230 and eventually you know going back above 230 again. That would be a, a good sign. But short term wise, yeah, I mean definitely a little bit of short term weakness, unfortunately, with it giving way. I mean, in terms of the 230 dollars support giving way you know and and not like what we have seen in in like august whereby it rebounded this time it didn't we saw some bullish reversal candle here but it didn't really play out in terms of the follow through above 240 we kind of like went down on this omicron um, news and of course the tech sector sell down as well all right so this is crop strike 180 to 200 is pretty much the next support levels whereby hopefully we see some good uh, stability in prices you know just just holding above those levels which are key Okay, so that's it, right, guys? I think we have pretty much covered about 12 counters, right? Pretty much covered about 12 counters. And uh, this, I would say, would be uh, the end of this entire Facebook Live session, right? So pretty much for those of you who are still here, thank you so much, right? So this is what we call the Facebook Live session, which I will go through, like, the stocks which you guys are asking live, all right? And we have covered, like, the Singapore market um, just about three weeks or a month back. So maybe in the next one, we'll cover, like, the Singapore market again. So make sure... You, I think there should be like a notification or a bell somewhere. You can click on it and, um, you know, set an alert or something. So when we go live, that's where you will be alerted again, right? So if you guys have gained some value or if you have gained some value or maybe the stocks that we have covered are what you have, you, know, you were asking about. I mean, in terms of like the top 12 stocks that you're asking about, um, yeah, type value, right? Type value in the comments below, right? If you have gained some value, and if I've covered the stock that you, or not me, but you are asking about, let me know. Hi, Sadi. Hi, William. Uh, Lynette, good to see you. Awesome. Okay, good. So type value below if I've covered the stocks. Josephine Tan value, definitely poor debt value. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, value, value, value. Thank you. Hi, uh, James. Hello. Great value, Thomas Tan. Thank you. I hope you have uh, found, um, you know, I mean, some some clarity in terms of the stocks you're holding. Great value, T. Thomas, great value. Tanush, thank you very much for being here. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Um, Tom Do, thanks, Joey. Great value you're sharing. Awesome. I'm glad that you have gained something, all right? And yeah, so I think pretty much, guys, we have come to the end of this very Facebook live session. Thank you so much for being here. I think we have like more than 200 of you still here on board. I appreciate your time and I hope that you have you know, kind of like have a clearer understanding of those stocks that you guys are asking about. I look forward to see you in the next uh, Facebook live session. Give me a like as well. Hit the heart shape button before I sign off. Thank you so much and I look forward to see you guys soon. Have a good weekend and yeah, pretty much we are coming to the weekend again. Let's see how the US market plays out and you know how this whole entire uh, Omicron uh, news will play out. I think we, we kind of like need a little bit more time. I think maybe about one, two or three weeks for more data to come out, as I mentioned in the beginning, whereby we look at the Dow Jones. I think that is where if you can see a little bit more clarity in terms of the severity of the Omicron variant, I think that would be a good move. I think in terms of like, you know, it being not that 
severe and our current uh, vaccinations being like effective in terms of like, you know, uh, I, I mean, like, kind of like being effective, right, for this Omicron variant. I think that would be a good news. I think that's where the market can start to rebound fast, even like what we see in some of the banks, the Singapore banks that have sold off. I think if we do see like more news on that, uh, that, is, that is a positive. So being more transmissible, it can be a good thing as well. I think it can be like more transmissible, but less deadly. I think it could be a good thing. But once that is confirmed, of course, there's still some uh, professor coming out in Australia that says that, you know, it's, in terms of the symptoms, it's really not that deadly, all right? It's more mild, all right? Most people have no symptoms as well in terms of the Omicron variant. So we are waiting for more official news. And if that, and we, if you do have like more confirmation, I think that's where the market can see more, more strength coming back and people might start to really bug it hunt. All right, so thank you so much, guys. I hope you have gained value. All right, I look forward to see you in the next uh, Facebook Live session. Thank you so much. And I will see you real soon again. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye.